Dear reader, hope these letters find you well. Think of these letters forming strings that you can pull off the page. These images too. Maybe they can reach you wherever you are. As artists who have been gathering and discussing online to develop the exhibition Images That Take, Images That Give, it's important for us to examine the ways that digital technologies intervene into our lives. We do this through our glossary on ways that images have agency. This glossary became a framework for our exhibition and we hope for those visiting us virtually or in the gallery, it offers an entry point into our idea that images can change the way we see. This glossary writes across a gap that separates research-based practice, full of searching, tracing, following, and seeking from the gallery space, which invites looking. We imagine that the glossary can surpass our own contributions, even after our exhibition is taken down. It naturally invites more agencies to join its ranks. One artist brought up the idea of verbing, a linguistic trick that turns nouns into verbs to conceive of new actions, gestures, and procedures. By placing a verb in front of the word image, suddenly we can consider the ways that the image might fulfill that role. There is the transcoding image. An image that acknowledges that digital cameras translate sights and views into binary code. Transcoding can alter images, as some of the original data is discarded in favor of smaller file sizes. Compressed digital files make us recognize the mediation that is inherent in seeing an image. As a machine, the drone cannot literally see, but it borrows human sight to navigate through the air. The drone transcodes people, objects, and landscapes into digital language, then translates them back into pixel compositions that are legible to us. This final step of image making is only for our eyes. The drone is perfectly content with binary stops and gus, all or nothing. I, the kite, a free creature in the sky. Trees are not the only threat. I, the kite, a flying bat in the sky. Buildings take away my space I the kite a flying ottoman in the sky I don't attack people I want to be alive the kite maps what little space remains within the aerial plane of urbanization as winds falter and the kite loses support, echoes of future developments creep in. Phantom settlements are non-existent towns written into maps as copyright traps. Preemptive scaffolding, a framework of what has yet to exist. Hegemonic urban development parallels the expansion of the dominant image. This image reveals itself over time through our active consumption, use, and circulation. It can be a unifier signaling a safe space for the like-minded, or it can be a control tactic used to incite fear. Above all else, the dominant image has the power to overshadow, adjusting the master narrative to suit its preferred conditions. While the dominant image builds, the unraveling image deconstructs, charging the viewer with consideration of the existing holes in our infrastructures. It asks us to tug at any threads that are coming undone, 
but not to cut at the weave of the fabric. These woven structures are like water, and they will engulf us if we slash at them. Instead, so as not to drown, we should snag at loose threads, tug, pull, bit by bit, and drain what is irreparably damaged. Disfigured and vengeful, the inflicting image understands and wallows in what it is. Interaction with the inflicting image is never on the viewer's terms, as it operates completely on its own agenda. This image is forceful, ruthless, and sadistic. It is always present, always waiting just out of peripheral view. It wants you to suffer, just as it has. Britain and Europe started to pay attention to her lip color. The Financial Times website reported on December 30th that the British Parliament is uncomfortable with the role of motherhood. Conservative new mothers are vulnerable to maternity. 30 overwhelmingly approved. After depression, engage in a job with vast most shoot. Past a more introverted personality, up to 47 years of EU membership, the catharsis looking for close friends or relatives to communicate as much as possible to tell the heart. The virus infection reached more than 1,300 people. A big cry does not hurt. Enjoyed first Johnson thank the legislators and said this great catharsis depressed emotions. The hosting image describes a paradox, a set of tensions between a desire to be with others and an inability to gather in physical space. When we are away from home, when our homes are no longer safe, or when we cannot host in our living rooms, can images become alternate sites of gathering? نظافة بالنسبة لمجتمعنا العربي والسوري بشكل خاص وإذا فينا نقول محافظتنا نحن بشكل خاص الرقة لها تاريخ قديم جدا أتذكر أول لما كان يحكي لنا أنه والدي مثلا أو أنه أجداده أنه كان باب غرفة المظافة ما بيصير يتسكر أنه دائما بيكون مفتوح للضيف وكان الضيف يجي ثلاثة أيام على البيت وأنت ما تسأله حتى أنه ليش شو جاي يعني ثلاثة أيام بالضيفة وبعدها ممكن إذا بدك تسأله أنه أنت ليش جاي Typically, the image is a thing to be seen. It materializes under our touch and lies still while we admire, interpret, and then store it in drawers, folders, and archives. But here, we disrupt the seer-seen relation to propose that by engaging with technology, materiality, perception, and language, we can sensitize ourselves to the ways that images have agency. If the artist's role is to produce, create, and circulate images, we can also consider instances where images might cry out and retaliate. Maybe they can change the ways we see. Our visiting artist, Heba Y. Amin, asks first if art can mobilize change. Then she continues, should we be expecting this from art in the first place? This leaves us wondering when it comes to images, who or what is doing the taking and what or who is given up along the way. <laughs> 